When The Legend of Zelda first hit shelves back in 1986, it took the world by storm. A top-down action-adventure game with a gigantic map filled with puzzles and dungeons full of memorable enemies. The game sold over 6.5 million copies and is known as one of the most influential games of all time. The rest is history. 30 years and many sequels and spin-offs later, the world was gifted The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in 2017. The newest Zelda game switched up the formula and took Link riding across the biggest version of Hyrule we had ever seen, with a focus on exploration and enough little distractions from the main story to carve out your own adventure. Nintendo producer A.E.G. Aonuma has recently confirmed that another new Zelda title is in production. With Nintendo recently announcing a remake of the 26-year-old classic Game Boy entry Link's Awakening, there's no better time like the present to speculate over what the next big new Zelda title will be. Perhaps Nintendo will use everything they have learned over the years from their tried and tested formula and combine that with the success of their new open world format to absolutely blow Breath of the Wild out of the water. How does one even top what has been called the perfect video game? My name is Rach and welcome back to What Culture Gaming. This is how Nintendo can beat Breath of the Wild. The Legend of Zelda series basic formula can be summed up with three main ingredients. Recurring heroes and villains, e.g. Link, Zelda, Impa and Ganon, varying environments, Hyrule Castle, Zoro's Domain, Gerudo Valley for example, and equipment used to solve puzzles and utilised in boss fights, such as the Hookshot, Fire Arrow and Magnesis. Nintendo took this same basic formula and changed Zelda from a mostly linear story peppered with side quests into a massive open world where the side quests are easily more of a focus than the main one. In Breath of the Wild, you can technically go immediately from your starting point straight to the final boss, although this will be very difficult with no equipment and isn't exactly recommended. Players were free for the first time in the series to complete as much side content as they felt comfortable with before moving on to complete the game. This modernization and catering to the open world genre, clearly dominating the gaming market at the moment, contributed heavily to the game's success, and many who had never been interested in the series in the past were now suddenly scrambling to purchase a Nintendo console for the first time. The craftsmanship of the Nintendo Switch console, for which Breath of the Wild was a launch title, did factor in somewhat to the success of the game. Not only could we go anywhere we wanted around the world of Hyrule, but we could also take that with us anywhere we wanted in the real world. The game introduced a solid physics engine that made solving puzzles an absolute joy, with often more than one way of tackling a problem, and a chemistry engine that introduced dynamic weather that made climbing walls in the rain slippery and metal weapons conduct lightning. Not only that, but Breath of the Wild introduced us to the legend of fashion. Finding new equipment for Link, each set with unique characteristics to help us survive the various weather conditions and environments of Hyrule, was a blast. This equipment could be leveled up, dyed, mixed and matched, creating levels of customization that the series has never seen before. Ingredients for leveling up armor could be found out in the world exploring by clearing bandit camps and discovering hidden chests. These ingredients could be used in cooking also to provide Link with stat boosts and to recover his health, an enjoyable RPG trope finally making its way to Zelda. All of these new features culminated into an intense sense of adventure on a massive scale. Breath of the Wild was exploration at its finest, with no rules, little regulations other than your own bravery, and was packed full of secrets and challenges to conquer. However, it wasn't universally adored particularly by the original game's loyal fanbase. Many have criticised the game's aimless nature and missed the sense of urgency in the storytelling from the previous games. Majora's Mask, for example, required players to complete dungeons and side quests within the short window of three in-game days. Everything we did had to be purposeful, and moving from dungeon to dungeon was a linear process. We would get an item that would allow us to complete Dungeon A, during Dungeon A we'd get an item to let us access Dungeon B, and so on. 
this sense of simplicity and puzzle solving fitting into the world was very different in Breath of the Wild. Having the ability to stop time and create ice blocks from water using our trusty digital tablet did not feel quite as authentic as finally finding a glider in a world full of strong winds or using our ocarina instrument to be able to control the passage of time. For every new gadget that Breath of the Wild introduced, there was an old, iconic feature of the series that was blatantly missing. So here we are in 2019 and eagerly awaiting the next Zelda. A Zelda game has been released at least every two years since 1998, and we are expecting Link's Awakening this year. So it is fair to assume that we could expect a shiny new Zelda to be announced within the next year or so for a 2021 release. As well as producer Eiji Aonuma confirming that a new game is in production, game director Hidemaro Fujibayashi has also confirmed that he has lots of ideas and motivation for the next game, but could not confirm if it will indeed be a sequel to Breath of the Wild or what form the game will take. However, one thing he did confirm was that because of how well it was received, the incredible freedom that came with Breath of the Wild will be something that needs to be maintained in Zelda games moving forward. They certainly won't want to mess around with the formula too much after Breath of the Wild broke sales records, selling 11.7 million copies worldwide. If the new game will use the same engine as Breath of the Wild, then it is safe to assume that we will see the same cell shaded graphics style. However, while Breath of the Wild was also developed for the Wii U, we would expect to see a much more refined and detailed art style on a Switch exclusive release, now free from the ties of the older, less capable Wii U hardware. In a perfect world, Nintendo will take everything groundbreaking that stunned consumers with Breath of the Wild and inject more of the classic Zelda charm that was missing from it. Now that we have had a giant sandbox Zelda, the next title should maintain the level of exploration but have more of a linear story, with more to see and do to keep up the pace. Keep the same sense of being able to ride off in any direction you fancied, but cut out a lot of that dead space. Don't get me wrong, visiting every corner of the map searching for shrines and Korok seeds was a blast, but now that we've had that, our new Zelda must be tightened up a bit. Transform the Kingdom of Hyrule into the peak of its history, back to its glory days. Erect great towns and cities throughout the kingdom with more side characters who can pop up throughout the campaign, like Cass did, and give us a bit of fan service by bringing back old characters from previous games. Mixing Breath of the Wild with Majora's Mask would be the best comparison. Every single NPC in Majora's Mask had a purpose. They were going about their day and had a certain number of things that they would accomplish throughout the story. Breath of the Wild did have this to an extent, but on the whole, the world felt devoid of life in parts, with only small communities taking up the odd town and stable dotted around the map, surrounded by vast expanses of open, empty land. Let us see the return of the ocarina, the hookshot, the iron boots, heck even the flippin' spinner. Give us these items as a reward for completing big dungeons once more and have that sense of progression throughout the game returned, but without there being one singular linear path through the world. Build upon the customization that we were given with armor sets. Let us change Link's height, weight, hair style, hair color, or even his gender. The hero of Hyrule has taken many forms in the past and has been reborn many times throughout the ages, but has never really changed that much until Breath of the Wild. We loved this new design for Link, proving that our hero does not need to wear a green tunic and a long cap in order to be recognizable. Take the formula of exploring to gather items to increase armor stats and apply that to weapons. Degrading weapons was one of Breath of the Wild's most anguishing features. Although it did encourage you to keep trying out new things, it was altogether frustrating when you happen upon a giant block of ice and your fire sword literally just broke five minutes ago. Let Link find a weapon that he likes and store the rest in a chest in his house. Yes, I loved having my own house in Breath of the Wild, don't lie, you loved it too. Similarly to Dark Souls, every single weapon would be viable. It would have its own strengths and weaknesses and we could use ore and wood gathered from our adventures in order to strengthen the weapons or perhaps even craft them entirely from scratch, like in the Elder Scrolls. 
Bring back the King of Red Lion's boat, the Spirit Train, or even the Twilight Beast will form and introduce more ways to traverse the massive open worlds. Build upon the already fantastic glider, maybe replace it with a loft wing, and suddenly the whole world opens up before you. We'll keep the horse training though. That was lovely, that. Last but certainly not least, give us Ocarina of Time's incredible dungeon design. Ranging in size as you eased into the game, Ocarina gave us some of the best dungeon designs we have ever seen in video games. Yes, even the Water Temple. Each had a specific gimmick, a special item or piece of equipment found inside that was used to help complete the dungeon, and the boss encounter was designed in accordance with this. If the special equipment was found inside the dungeon, we could still maintain the non-linear approach, with any dungeon being potentially the first or the last one, but it would make them feel meaningful and they would take time and effort to complete. The new and improved water temple would be history in the making. There we have it. That is how I believe that Nintendo should make the next Legend of Zelda game. Do you agree? Or was Breath of the Wild perfect and they should just pop out Breath of the Child? I've been Rach and this has been What Culture Gaming. You can follow me on Twitter if you like at Don't Rage Quit. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have an awesome day.